Hi, my name's Tim McPherson. This is a Sussex Angling Media, another one of our little underwater adventures, filming place this time, again, uh, off Bexhill. Uh, I was out with Jim Whippy recently, and uh, we decided to put a water wolf on one of our rigs. More on that little gadget a bit later, but uh, let's get straight into the action. And uh, here you can see our rig going down to the bottom. I'm using a spreader with two, obviously two snuds on it, lots of bling. Um, and as you'll see, I think the fish rather like this bling. Uh, and uh, it hits the bottom. Uh, the the, sorry about the rotation on it. Uh, apologies for that. It's very difficult to keep it stable in a strong tide. But you do get a good view of what's going on. So here we are, um, nothing bait plonked on the bottom, all looking a bit untidy, and hey presto, up comes a f uh, our first fish. Curious, I think, because he saw the puff of sand, and now he's seen the bait and has decided to have a go at it. And you can see, um, as we go through this, that these fish, uh, they come after the bait quite regularly. Uh, and uh, a bit later on, there's a lot of mayhem. There's one just come out of nowhere. He was obviously swimming around, probably the same one, just swimming around. And you can see him, he's come back again for another look. Insatiably curious little things. And then there's another one that has popped up in the, um, in the corner there. And you can see there, on top right hand corner, two of them. So we move this on and uh, here we go. Two plays following you. Uh, he's having another go. And there's three plays now. One, two, three, all in a line. So clearly, once one gets interested, all the commotion must attract other fish, I guess. Anyway, he's back again, even though I've missed him. Uh, a bit of incompetent fishing. Here we go. Back on the bottom. And there's a place. Just literally plonked the bait on top of him, went scuttling off into the, uh, into the water column. There we go. Another place you can just see top right. Bottom right, depending on where the camera's swiveled round. It's quite an interesting bottom. It's very um, sandy. There's very little other material down there. There's two more plays coming in at the top. Uh, they do. They, they are attracted to all this stuff, aren't they? And it's not just a bait. Clearly, as you'll see later. One of them looks like he's hooked and he's swimming around. I quite often found that I thought they were hooked and they weren't. They weren't swallowing the bait that day. In comes a gurnard. A bit of a smash and grab rain. He's come back again. And I've got both of them. He took it and we have both fish. There you go. Okay, back down again. There's another place. He's taken the bait that almost a minute it hit the bottom. And then again, another one has appeared behind it. It's quite clear that they are uh, attracted to the commotion that's being caused, and I guess that's um, uh, you know a bit like birds. I guess uh, you know one bird turns up, you probably get two or three crows if they are. We'll, we'll, we'll see what's going on. Another one just pops out of the sand there. Top right again, but it's moving quite fast. We're doing about a mile an hour, so these fish uh, they are swimming at that rate quite easily. Obviously. And that flurry of sand is when one's been hooked. They're all about the same size, as you can see. They're all around about a pound and a half mark. Uh, we did catch an awful lot of them. Those three fish there, all in one little group, fighting over the bait. And then another one turns up. Through the water again, back down again. And uh, I think we've got two hooks there. And an awful lot of double shots. Awful lot of them. Clearly these fish were feeding very, very greedily. Probably because they're just off to, to spawn. And here it is coming up through the water. And the reason I show this is the gurnard followed them all the way up. I've been reading him for quite a long time. You can see that gurnard, and he's not given up either. There we are, another one. Gurnard hits it straight away. Again, we caught a lot of gurnards. Must have caught, I don't know, 10 or 15. Great little fish to eat. Lovely, chunky flesh. and. Uh, this beautiful fins, of course, which sadly you can't see on this um, uh, resolution. And here we go. Still I'm going to go. It's fascinating watching it all. It's just slightly un disorientating. There's 
because of the revolving of the camera again, but apologies for that. But you can see very clearly, there's a place, comes in, looks like he's chasing the gurnard off at that point. And he had a right go. Mm. I love the way they swim, they sort of almost pull themselves off the bottom. Here they go. Now this is quite interesting. Another punch up with a place and a gurner. They, they're fighting over it. And there's another gurner that turns up there. And that one is actually attacking the, the rig rather than the bait, which shows that at that uh, resolution they're obviously getting something. And look, there's chaos down there. There's sand everywhere, fish everywhere. And there was one charter boat that caught 300 place um, shortly before we went out. And we had, as I said, about 40, I think in a couple of hours as the tide was moving. There we go. Chasing the bait up. They don't give up either. He comes straight back for it. Here he comes. There we go. Still coming. Still coming. Trying to grab it. Because we know that they'll take feathers and stuff like that. They're often caught in species and baited feathers. I mean, mackerel fishing. There he is. Look, yeah, look, he's thinking, what's going to happen now? They do seem to, have the, the, the most important thing is that they will circle the bait thinking, does that look edible? And the minute it moves, um, they go for it. And I think that's the crucial part of it and why, obviously, when, you, when it's slack water, we tend to catch a lot less of these fish and a lot more thornback rays. I was hoping to get a thornback on this because we did catch one and there are a lot in this area, but um, uh, no, we didn't, uh, I didn't see one. Look, he's even had a go at the lead then. Still coming. Interesting. He's having a right go. Look, thrashing around. <laughs> trying to get the thorn off the end of it. No, he's hooked down. And he drops it. That happened a lot. We were, we were getting bites all the time, and then bang, you'd think you'd got one, and halfway up they just let go. Possibly because we had too much bait on. Uh, clearly, looking at this, we, we did. I mean, I think we could have had half the bait on it. And those are half lugworms. I mean, even then, you know, we were using one half on each side. Um, I don't know what that was. That didn't look like a gurner. It didn't look like a place, but um, it's difficult, very difficult to tell. That's a gurner, top right, and there's a place top left. Again, the gurner snaffled a bit of it. He seemed quite content to sort of, like bream do, to sort of chew away at it. There's more chaos, like a sandstorm down there. The uh, fish thrashes around. There's a gurnard again. Lots of gurnards. Up she comes. There's a place. I'm going to go. Creating an awful lot of sand. In the, uh, in the water there, just thrashing around. And of course, we all know, plates are very powerful. And these ones are very chunky, but more there. There you go. Oh, uh, there's two there. As we go on. Now, we're getting to an interesting bit here, because uh, what seemed to happen is that more and more fish were appearing. And I think in a minute, you'll be able to see four or five of them. It's a bit like um, uh, watching the cavalry coming. Suddenly, there's fish everywhere. There's one that's been hooked, um, and he's scuttling off on it. Can I have a fight, this one? And there behind it is another fish, you can see, following the place up through the water column. And I've never seen this before, obviously. Incred there he is, look. It's incredible, he followed him up probably halfway. Now what this is, I don't know. We, of course we know that bass do this when they're spawning and we know these fish are just on the point of spawning. Could it be something to do with that? I don't know. It actually did give up. But they do seem to follow each other. It could be that they're following the, the, the bling of course, but um, and there he is, look, pops into the shot saying hello, we'll never see what's going on here. <laughs> he comes back again, look. In a minute, there he goes. You can see him brushing past. It's almost like he's attacking the uh, the bait. There he is. <laughs> Incredible. It's quite a sizable fish, that one. Probably about a pound and a half. 
There's another one, come out of the sand. They do sit in the sand. There's one, another one that's popped out of the sand. And this is a bit where suddenly there's fish everywhere. There's one, you'll see there's one there. And an awful lot of activity. Everyone being landed. Now here, this is the part. Suddenly, it all just goes berserk. There's one. And then you'll see the, the camera spins around two, and then another one. He's following that one. Then there's another one. That's three. And he hooked. We had a lot of double shots that day, as I mentioned earlier. See the weight puffing up the sand. And there, loads of them. Incredible really sort of worked them up into a bit of a frenzy. And of course, don't forget there were three other, there we go, three other um, rigs down there. There you go, one, two, you can just see, there you go, four, five, one, God, I love them. They're everywhere. It is a particularly good area, of course. Uh, a lot of place feeding in um, this, this particular patch. That's six miles off Tex Hill. And a shot with a place following another place. Incredible. Well, this is the Water Wolf. This is the gadget I've been using to film place. And it's uh, set up on a, on a sort of rod uh, here, which you attach to your line. And then I, what I've done is I've attached a swivel here to the bottom end of it and then a length of line which is based on the focal length that I want uh, so that I can get the bait uh, as well as the spreader and the, and the stuff on the bottom you know into the shot uh, and obviously you adjust that. Obviously with some traces it's very difficult uh, with a turbot trace we're using sort of uh, six, six feet traces and, and you couldn't really see the bait at the end of it but um, you know it's a good little gadget. <laughs>